Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. I'm here at a newish, a, a recently upgraded EVgo site that's being funded by GM's Ultium funding plan, right? We've recently heard that they expanded it. You know, I have some issues with how uh, electric vehicle media hasn't been covering this enough. Uh, they haven't really been talking about it at all, uh, at least not to the extent that I think they should, given the importance of uh, this expansion to EVgo, right? EVgo uh, so far is one of the only public charging providers who's uh, actually given any metric in terms of how reliable their network is. Uh, they, they've quoted a 98% charger uptime. And I can attest to this, right? At a charger level, uh, they are far more reliable than Electrify America, than ChargePoint. Uh, and a 90% charger uptime uh, might actually rival uh, the Tesla superchargers, right? Like you don't hear much about Tesla having superchargers that are down because, oh, well, you just go to the next plug and the next plug. For EVgo, that's traditionally been a problem because a lot of times they only have one or two chargers at a site. And so if one is down, that's a big deal. But if one is down at a site with 10 chargers, not so big of a deal. So in this case though, uh, these Ultium chargers, right? These uh, GM funded uh, chargers, they're usually in sites of at least four, some of them six, some of them eight. I've only seen one site that is a two charger setup, two 350 kilowatt chargers. And that speed is super important because right now, these are the 350 kilowatt chargers that are being built out at the greatest pace. Yes, Electrify America is providing 350 kilowatt charging, uh, but there's a, a subtle but very important difference between these GM-funded EVgo sites and Electrify America sites. So if you go to a charging site with six, eight, ten uh, chargers for Electrify America, even the Santa Clara Mall charger that I went to that has 14 chargers, out of all of those chargers for Electrify America, only two are 350 kilowatt and 12 are 150 kilowatt. If you go to a EVgo uh, Ultium ready site, well now all of a sudden if you have six or eight chargers, well four or six of them are 350 kilowatt and only two of them are those power splitting 100 kilowatt delta chargers. So there's more of an emphasis on these faster 350 kilowatt charging at these Ultium ready uh, DC fast charging sites for EVgo. Now that, that puts them at a distinct advantage in terms of speed. Uh, if you have a faster charging EV, something like a GMC Hummer EV, a Hyundai Ioniq 5, a uh, Lucid Air, a Porsche Taycan, well, you're going to want to emphasize a site like this because if you go to a six charger Electrify America site, you have a one in three chance of getting a 350 kilowatt charger. If you go to a six charger Ultium Ready EV Go site, you have a you know a two out of three chance of getting a 350 kilowatt charger that's ready and accessible. And a, I also mentioned this in my site review for this site, uh, but so far I have not seen any issues with these Ultium Ready sites not outputting the rated power. Uh, now part of that could just be because of the power that's plumbed you have this access to 350 kilowatt charging that you don't have at any other site and they seem to have their power settings right because one of the problems with Electrify America right now is they seem to be putting sites in places that don't have adequate power and so they either waiting for the utility to upgrade the power dispensing the power drop or they're having to buy battery backup systems to account for that shortfall. So uh, I know out of spec motoring did a recent Electrify America re uh, site review in Naples, Florida, where one of the chargers is shut down and uh, one of them is restricted to 50 kilowatt. And then the only other one was the, the Chatamo 50 kilowatt. So it looks like a power restricted site. Uh, and that's what happens when you sort of push forward and put a site in and the utilities have to catch up to it. Whereas here, this site looks ready for this much power draw. There's a, a Tesla supercharger just across the parking lot. So there's already a power drop that's sufficient to manage this much power. So even without a battery backup system, they're able to fully power 
four 350 kilowatt chargers in addition to two 100 kilowatt chargers. And, and that configuration, I think, is going to be really important moving forward because, again, if you have a faster charging vehicle, this is the site that you're going to want to concentrate on. And, you know, my site reviews, I don't talk about pricing, but this is a really important aspect of EVgo. Uh, they've sh recently shifted their pricing to per kilowatt hour in a lot of markets. Now, I, I will call foul because they haven't done that in Florida where it appears to be legal. So I'm not sure why EVgo in Florida isn't charging per kilowatt hour when they could legally do so. And that's actually causing a lot of bad PR for them uh, because they, uh, they're, they're pricing themselves out of the market despite also installing these Ultium chargers in that area. All right, well, I, I had to move so, uh, so the ID4 uh, driver could move. But um, yeah, uh, I didn't intend for this to be a, a rant video at all because I, I, I think I want to focus on the positive and so if nobody else is going to report on the fact that GM is funding 3,250 chargers worth of sites like this, then you know I, I think somebody has to do it and I guess that's me. Not that anybody else seems to pay attention, right? Uh, so if you ask who killed it, you, you know, the electric car, well, apparently it's not GM and it's not EVgo because they're doing a great job right now. Uh, now, to be fair, based on what we know about this network and this build out, there are still some things that I would like to see improved, right? So one of those things is they all seem to be right now focused around metropolitan areas. In EVgo's defense though, they know their market. They know where their chargers are seeing the most use. They know who's using them the most frequently. If you look at their EVgo app, you used to be able to see site usage statistics and their highway and travel charger sites, they were only used about half as often or maybe even a third of the time that their city sites are used. Just in the time I've been here recording my videos, uh, we've had at least six different EVs come and go. So uh, this is a busy site, right? This is going to get EVgo a lot of traffic. They're not gonna really have to worry about demand charges because they're gonna be selling so much power from this location that it's gonna offset itself. So I, I'm really impressed with what you know, like I said, GM is doing. It's nearly a billion dollars worth of funding. I, I'm really impressed with the site design. They are catering to or directly focused on these bigger battery pack, faster charging EVs that can take advantage of 300 to 350 kilowatt charging. Uh, and then of course, EVgo, they're doing a great job in providing coverage and uh, utility for all uh, EV types. The, if you're a Tesla owner, you don't even need an adapter. You can come here and charge just like the rest of us. So I think overall this is great. EVgo's pricing is improving. Uh, the big criticisms is full pull-through parking, which again, to EVgo's credit, for a lot of their travel sites, they actually do a really good job of, better than any other network. In fact, better even than the superchargers in terms of full pull-through uh, charger access. But they aren't building these on freeway routes and that's where they need it. So I'd love to see an Ultium equivalent to what they did in Baker, maybe every 100, 150 miles on all of the major interstate corridors throughout the country. You fund that, maybe get BMW involved, maybe get Ford involved, maybe get Nissan involved with their upcoming Aria. Get them to help build out the network along with the GM, pay for it, let EV go manage it, and it's a win-win-win for everybody involved. And so, uh, anyway, again, not wanting this to be a rant, or if it is a rant, I want it to be a positive rant because this is great news and it needs a lot more coverage from the EV media community who doesn't seem to want to give GM credit for anything and wants to apparently not give EV go credit for anything either, and that's unfortunate. So, um, yeah. Again, I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, how much have you been seeing about these sites? Have you been seeing these sites going up in your area? I've been trying to track them right now. Uh, located in Seattle, San Francisco, Greater Bay Area, the uh, 
greater Los Angeles area, Denver, uh, Atlanta, looks like in Philadelphia and uh, Pittsburgh, and then of course in Florida as well. But outside of that, we don't know a whole lot of the other cities that are being covered or where these are being built. Um, probably going to end up being a place like Phoenix, hopefully the you know Dallas-Fort Worth area, Houston, San Antonio, obviously up in uh, Michigan. You'd like to see Detroit supported as well, maybe Portland. So we'll see where they where these other metropolitan areas are. Uh, but so far, I have no complaints. EVGO has been doing a great job. These are great sites. Kudos to GM for funding them. Ultium ready chargers. You buy a 350 kilowatt charging EV. This is where you should be prioritizing your stops. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'd love to hear what you think. Have you had a chance to use one of these chargers before? What do you think of the program? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.